because that's a 2019 BMW M2 Competition Coupe, and it's replacing the standard M2 for the near future. Now the M2, it belongs to a small but ultra-competitive segment I like to call the Super Sub Compacts, and that includes the Audi RS3 and Mercedes CLA 45 AMG. This new M2 Competition Coupe, it's raising the bar. It's got a new engine making a ton more power and a number of other go-fast tweaks, which could make it the new leader of the pack. <laughs> so let's talk about this engine for a second. It's the high performance version of the previous engine. They call it the S55 and it's in both the M3 and M4. So what are the differences between this and the old engine? It's got a stronger block for one. It's got a lightweight forged crankshaft and stronger pistons, which allows it to handle more boost. So it makes 405 horsepower and 406 pound-feet of torque. So that's, that's 40 more horsepower over the old engine and 63 pound-feet of torque more as well. That's game-changing horsepower for me. All it needed was a little bit more power. I thought that it, it didn't quite have as much power as it could have handled with the, with the chassis. BMW thought that too because they haven't really changed anything about the suspension here. You've got the carbon fiber brace up front which uh, significantly increases the structural rigidity of the front. So they had to do a little bit of tuning with the steering and everything, but they've left the rest of the suspension the same. And so this thing handles like a dream and now it has the power to back it up, which is incredible. Oh man, I love this car so much. So the M2 Competition Coupe, just like the previous car, you have two options for transmission. So we have the six-speed manual, which I'm driving here, and you have the seven-speed dual-clutch automatic. Manual doesn't feel any different from the previous car. In fact, I know it's a different transmission, but if you didn't tell me that, I wouldn't have guessed. It's got automatic rev match function, as you can hear, which works perfectly. So if you're one that likes to drive down in the canyons and you're going for a downshift, well the engine's gonna blip the throttle and match the revs automatically so you don't have to know how to heel toe downshift. Some people, the purist, have issues with that. I don't. You can turn off the feature if you don't like it, but the fact of the matter is it does a perfect job of rev matching the downshifts. Now if you get the seven speed transmission, that's I would say equally as fun. You don't get to stir your own gears, but you get to go quicker because you don't have to think about shifting. You have uh, your gear changes at the tips of your fingers. So I don't know what I would prefer. The uh, seven speed DCT is gonna be the faster car because it's gonna be able to shift quicker than you could ever hope to. That and you have launch control. I think they place it a couple tenths quicker with the DCT than with the manual, so something you have to accept if you decide to go with the manual. But that being said, this is a very good manual. It's got a really light clutch throw, real easy engagement, and the gearbox is effortless. Now, as far as road comfort goes, the M2 is a pretty good compromise. Uh, the suspension isn't adaptive because BMW said that if they went that route that they couldn't keep the price low enough to be competitive. That said, I don't think it needs an adaptive suspension if you're somebody in this, shopping in this segment, somebody that cares about performance and driving, and this is probably the best driver's car in the segment. I would actually say it, it's definitely the best driver's car in this segment then you're gonna be able to put up with a little bit more stiffness in the in the ride quality. We had a pretty bumpy road on this drive. Um, it was punishingly bumpy. We had an M5, I mean the M5 competition out on that road as well. And both cars, I mean this car was no less comfortable on that road than the M5, which says something, you know, this doesn't, again, doesn't have adaptive suspension. And so it's set to one setting. But it works. It works. It works great on the track, as we drove on earlier, and it works great on the street. I could easily do hundreds of miles in this thing in a single pass, as long as I'm not in rush hour traffic. So I think if you're somebody that's planning to buy this car, 
as your daily driver, you could totally do it. If you've seen the interior of an M2 before, then you might recognize that they haven't really tried to reinvent the wheel here. Everything looks pretty much like the standard car. You've got the carbon fiber trim along here. You've got the contrast stitching all throughout the interior, which you can get in blue or orange, I believe. And you've also got the M striping detail along the steering wheel as well as the seat belts. By far, the biggest upgrade for this interior has to be the new M Sport seats. They feel great. They have a ton more lateral support here at the thighs as well as at the sides. You also have this integrated headrest, which kind of mimics a one-piece race seat, as well as the logo here, which illuminates because who doesn't like a little bling? All right, guys, that is the 2019 M2 Competition Coupe. I think BMW did a knockout job with it. And you know what? I think it's probably the one I would go with out of the Super Subcompact Trinity. Yeah, I think I'm in love. But that's my thoughts. We'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments. And if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to Edmunds on YouTube.